Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about this thing. This is called a plant room in a box. Yes, this is gonna do the garden room. It's gonna do my hot water. It's gonna do my ventilation, so MVHR, mechanical ventilation and heat recovery. It's also going to do the wet underfloor heating, which is going all the way through the building. Now, I'm not gonna explain at this point what's inside this box, but watch this video because we take this 250 kilogram unit from my driveway and we get it all the way up here through the small door and round into position. And it was a quite an interesting day. Fortunately, I had some really good helpers come along and help me. Check this video out. This is how we did it and what this unit is all about. Good morning. How's it running? All very well. Thank yeah. You. yeah. You all right? You've been well? Yeah, keeping very busy. You? Good. Yeah, yeah. So this is the thing we have to move. So what you've got there is a Neeland Compact P, which is a ventilation unit, an MVHR unit, a heating and cooling coil with driven compressor unit, all in one box, basically. So it's like a little plant room in a box. So the first job is to strip it back down. So I arrived yesterday and it was pouring with rain. So another a a good, day today. Yeah, a good use of a ton bag. It was absolutely horrible yesterday. And it was incredible, the wind, but it, it was sort of blowing. So I had to get a ladder behind it with the, uh, the hooks and strap it up to think this is gonna stop it from going over. So um, yeah, it was a bit interesting to say the least. So we'll strip it down, have a look what we've got. It's got lifting eyes, which are factory fitted, which go all the way around it. Uh, which should enable us to hold it and track it really gently, really slowly, all the way up the garden and round towards where it's going to end up, hopefully. They've got like a protective sheath inside, but that was just belt and braces approach anyway. We'll just whip this, whip this manky cardboard off as well. Car. There you go. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. So if you, when we get your hook, Mark, we'll just um, ping these up onto the hook, raise it up and lift it up off the ground. What I'm going to do, though, I'm going to take this top box. This is just the filter box. The filters live in there, the MVHR yeah. side of things. This is only six T20 screws. I'm just going to whip that, that off so we don't damage it while we're, yeah. while we're putting the, 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 uh, the lift. It needs to come off to go through, I think. It will do, absolutely, yeah, for when it gets up to the summer house. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Do we need this anymore? No, have some disruption. Oh, they're no good giving these to me. No, you won't, you won't need those. You've got a resident it's expert got, now, well, I know allegedly. It, I know it's got a plug on the end, which fits into a shaver socket. Well, that'll, that'll be all right. That, that, no. <laughs> that actually, that's the power. That's only five amp. That powers the internet gateway. Oh, OK. Well, everyone needs an internet gateway. They do at uh, uh, this day and age. So, yeah, so we have those little screws off. And then we'll get Mark's wonderful contraption. Well, it's a lovely looking piece of kit. Oh, that'll, that'll cruise in there. That'll cruise in. Should be about 1960, is it? With, think, without yeah. the top box? Two, that, 2065 with the box. It'll cruise in. So, yeah. Oh, can, that's lovely, isn't it? How easy it. that is. So that's there's brilliant. extract filter and uh, fresh air filter, and they just remove, when you change them every, yeah, just every 90 days, the machine will tell you to change, unscrew them, whip them out, give them a hoover, put them back in, as per your, as per your MVHR unit in the house. So. But brilliant. it's handy that that comes off. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, if you did have to leave that on, the chances are you're gonna have trouble with something. Well, it doesn't always. go under a 1981 standard door right. if that's on, right, and okay. it will do now. Well, I think we're laughing now then. Well, let's see about that. So this is, <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at our machine, our amazing machine we've got here.
Okay. I'm going to take this train. So what will happen now is it will probably, it'll break off the pallet now because they're only secured down very lightly. So if we ping that up a bit, we'll just kick the pallet off the bottom and away we go. Lovely. So the guys have got it all ready, but we're just going to make sure. There's quite a lot of room there. Yeah. Like I say, if you lift it, can you, you pick it up there and it'll swing out? Yeah. And then we'll go up here and we just got to decide when we trash the grass. Yeah. That's up to you, Mark. I mean, I mean, you're in charge. It's your machine. You're the man with the experience. So this is the route we're maybe taking, and we're gonna go straight up here, and then round the back of the summer house. Mark's just literally checking out the route. He's like an athlete preparing for a big race. Here's where we're going, straight the way through here. We're gonna land it on there, and it will slide across level, and then we'll move it off the platform on the inside to its final resting place. And it's just like the most beautiful day today. You can't beat this, can you? Yesterday it was heavy rain. Here's Mark having a look at the other side now. So this is amazing. This is a really tight bit here. So we're having to lift it over the wall. And that enables Mark to actually drive around. Alright, you around. clear that next bit of wall now already, so... It'll be alright, that. Then you're going to clear it with the foot plate. You're clear at the back now, I think. Lovely. Lovely. So we're actually deciding, instead of going across the grass, because Mark is super conscientious, he doesn't want to trash my grass, so we're going to try and go the gnarly way. So the gnarly way is through the trees, so we'll see. I'm sure he can do it, he's an expert at this. Around the trampoline, it's like an assault course. <laughs> this is where we're going now, we're going to have a go going up here. This is, this is a really messy, muddy path getting up this steep, steep climb here, negotiating that really tight bend there, all the way down the side. There's another manhole down here to contend with as well, but we're gonna try and scoot around there. So this is the route now. Let's see how he gets on. 
so here he comes. I think the key with any kind of building work is knowing that you can actually get something done. Now, I'm not saying that we knew we could get this done. It's too early for me to say. I'm certainly not going to tempt fate. But I think having the right equipment, if Lovely. we tried to manhandle this, it's 202 kilograms and it's top heavy. It would have been an absolute nightmare. So Mark's kindly going to give it a go this way through the rhododendron. Watch that route there a bit. And it's going for it now. So Then you've got a few rocks coming here. Ah, oh, this is amazing. I mean, this this hooker machine, now Mark actually invented it's good here now. and built it. And I mean, I'm so impressed. This is the steep bit. I reckon if we can negotiate this, we're half halfway home. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking real good. All good. if anything weird happens. Just got a tricky drain here, which has got a scoop round. And we'll a big bag that of off over this bag of bricks, or maybe not. The versatility of this machine is bloody brilliant. It is. I'm and loving it. <laughs> using this to lift steels on site has been a real dream for us recently. Well, you haven't seen the video. I'll pop a link in the description to when we use it for some steel work. This is a dream. Ah, oh, this is absolute quality. And the best thing is, because Mark's actually got a boom there, so he only needs to get so far before he can start actually aiming it via the boom to land exactly where we need it. And I can see that he's watching the guttering, he's watching the floor. I mean, the skill of this man is ridiculous. I would, I would so if you want to do. drop it down, when I've got that corner on there, like, kind of now, yeah, that's it. Okay. Like that. Right, Greg? More cocking, boys. That's it. Yeah, jib out a bit. That's it. Bit more. Watch your fingers on that. Ready? Right. Right. Drop it down. Then down you go. Yeah. Keep, keep coming down. That's it. Yeah, that's it. No, no, no. You just do that, and as he, you'll have to let it down, Mark, a bit more as you come. Right. Yeah. 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 That's good, boys. It's all. Let it come, Greg. That's all right. That's it. 
Okay. <laughs> that was a bit of fun. I have done that. Yeah, I've, I've I have done, done that before. Yeah, I can see that. That's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this thing is so versatile. Jeez. And the worst thing about Mark's job is he gets hired in by people like me. <laughs> he gets the odd picture by people like me. And then he rocks up and he has to just do this really calm poker face. <laughs> like we've done it all before. So the thing you do after you do a job like this is either have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or something like that. So I'm happy to go and make some teas and coffees if you like, or is Would that right? do that? Looks like he's being rattled in now. They did use the expression cocking it in, but I wasn't quite sure whether there was such a thing. I mean, this is like a proper council job. There's, there's two, four here, but only two doing the work. All right, that's it. We do have to be marginally general. No, no, no. We are being marginally general. This is marginally general. Isn't they it? have uh, the compressors are mounted on, like on little on little feet, to stop vibration once the machine is. In, in situ and working to keep it very, very quiet. Right, okay. So what they can't do is you can't really lie them down because the compressor, if you've ever, if you've ever felt a compressor on its own, even though, even though it's only 15 cubic centimetre, it'll, it'll, it'll weigh about 15, 20 kilos. Really? So it can easily uh, come off, you know, rupture the fridge lines. Right. If, it, if it's leaned over. So you don't really want to lean them over no. unless you go into the thing and pack the compressor yeah. beforehand, which you can do. Bit more, all the way to that. Uh, what's your arm, Robin? Yep. When it comes, that's it. Okay. Now your side. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then shuffle. Go in your end, yeah. That's it. That's about right, isn't it? Now. Yeah. And that's roughly but, where it's going to live. Yeah. But you to... want to bring it back out as well, don't you? Yeah. Because well, what... we've got to do the roof vents. Yeah. And... What, what I'll probably do because I've got to set the roof vents out, cut the roof vents. Yes. Yeah. Skate it back out this way, skate it back in, then I'll build See the wall off. Sound. Yeah. Well, that's it. Let's get a cup of tea. Job is a good one. Nice. Happy days. So using the hooker, Mark's invention, it is super simple to move objects around. We use this for everything, for steel beams in buildings. We also move ton bags from one end of a site to another. We also plant trees with it so it's super versatile and I think that you know trying to do this move this machine by hand or on wheels it would have just been a nightmare so I just think it's really worth looking into this and if and also Mark built this invented it and he's also franchised it so if you're interested in having one for yourself let me know So the unit has landed and um, I want to know what's inside it. Okay, right, here we go then. I'll do it as quickly as possible because quite a bit to take, take its clothes off. So the front panel comes off and we've got in just in there, we've actually mounted your expansion vessel for you. You've got your temperature pressure relief valve in there. That's 180 litres unvented cylinder. Um, so we just whip this off as well. Controller's behind, just behind there. That's the so that lives in yeah. there. Uh, there's an internet gateway on the top that means you can operate the thing off your phone. I just <coughs> wrestle with that very quickly. Do that and that will come off there. And just ping that to the side. And there we go. So you don't have to so unclip that. And do that. Obviously, clients will never ever have to do anything like this at all. You shouldn't even have to take the front off. The only thing you would be able to do as a client would be undo these two thumb screws just here, like any MVHR unit. Take that lid off there. Give them a hoover every 90 days to make sure. And you say that the system will tell you when well. to do that? Yeah, it doesn't know that your filters are dirty. It basically has a 90 day timer Time on it. Fine. I'm just gonna just lightly put this back on. Wow, there. look at that. That's so they're nicely engineered, absolutely no doubt about that. So you're familiar with MVHR as you have one, of course. Yeah. So that's your static heat exchanger just there. You've also, when we we're talking about the compressor being on yeah. those feet, which is why you don't yeah. want to tip it right over. So they're mounted on some really nice yeah, bouncy, see. bouncy feet so that when the compressor's on, you don't get any vibration, which of course keeps it nice and quiet. 
Um, and then well, you've got what looks like a um, radiator in there. What's exactly that? What, just here? Yeah. So what you've got there is that that's basically, basically a heat pump that lives, you know, that lives inside the box. If you've got uh, a traditional, as it were, air source heat pump, you would have a unit outside, your evaporator would be outside, and your condenser is in your tank or in your, you know, or, or in the unit, and you've got a high, you know, a, a, a flow and return that comes from outside from your air source outside. What we've got here is the evaporator for the air source, air to air heat pump is there, and the condenser is just there. Right. So every bit of air that, because you, because you, you know, you know about air tightness and stuff. Your, every bit of air that comes into this building, once you've sealed it up and you've got all your doors and windows shut, every single pit, bit of air that comes into this building should go across this plate. And this plate will either be at 40 degrees or in the summer maybe at 11 degrees. So at that point, every, you know, if you've got zero coming in, you've probably got an inject temperature of around 40. And if you've got 35 coming in, I've seen mine, I've got one of these in my house. Um, I've seen this you know, injecting at 35 degrees outside. Uh, injection temperatures of 16 to Beautiful. 18 degrees. So a bit like... Um, it is a bit like aircon, but yeah. of course, you know, we're only, we're, we're only putting that, the maximum flow rate of probably 325 or 300 metres cubed an hour down a 160 duct, not as powerful as aircon. And your aircon chiller, of course, you can see the size of this, these, these coils. Your coil on your heat pump or your aircon chiller is that wide and that tall and, and that deep, you know? But of course, that's dealing with much lower temperatures. This unit is always dealing with 20 degrees from inside. Right, got it. So on top of there, basically you have four chambers. So your, uh, use your air from the house, so the dirty air from the kitchens, bathrooms, and in this case, your shower rooms, comes into that port there, goes across through this exchanger. It's only 80% roughly efficient on purpose because we can't strip all the energy out of it like a traditional MVHR because we'd have nothing to put over the evaporator. So we take 80%, so take 80 of the energy out there. We've still got a few degrees on there to charge that, boil the fridge, compress it, and then charge this. Wow. First thing it does though, of course, is, is the, the, the fridge line comes straight and there's a, the condenser starts in the tank. So right. it does the hot water off the heat pump as well. So it'll do a tank full of hot water. Once the hot water's satisfied, then it'll charge this coil here. Every bit of air that then comes across, like we say, it comes in through a port down there. There's actually a tube at the back there because this is the fresh air chamber. Right. So the, when the compressor's running, it heats it slightly. Right. Then it comes through this block, heats it even more with the 20 degrees th from your inside, like normal MVHR. And then this raises it even further still. Incredible. And that's about it, really. I think we could go on and on and on and bamboozle everybody, but basically, it's a plant room in a box. It's I think it's, it's the simplest thing to, to, to describe it. Um, behind there, there's an extract fan and a supply fan. Um, that they can be changed by a decent engineer in you know, 40 minutes or something like that. When you say there. changed, replace. Replace, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, the, the, it, yeah. if there's anything going to go wrong with them, generally speaking, it's, you know, it's, a, yeah. it's a fan, a bit like your heating system. You, you, you first thing to go usually is the, the pump goes, yeah. isn't it? So, but yeah, yeah. normal yeah. uh, zone valves, pumps, and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, just mechanical things break, shocker. Yeah, right, yeah. But yeah and then so there's going to be an electric boiler in there. Yeah, that's going to live in here because uh, you don't have any uh, gas up here. Um, but we know this building is like massively airtight, it's also hugely insulated. So we're going to have some duct work floating about the place, but you're also going to have underfloor heating. Like I say, I've got one of these things in my house. Uh, my electric boiler runs for about 20 days a year. So even though we know that electric's expensive to run a you know, pure electric thing, the, the trade-off between having that and 8,000 quid's worth of heat pump outside is, is you know, yeah, you, you've yeah, got to do, you, you do the maths on it and, 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 and realise you, you take an educated view on do I do that or, or yeah. don't I. And so tell us a little bit about the history of these in terms of was it something that was used in other countries before it was popular yeah, these here? Were, so this is a company called Neeland. They're built in Denmark. And I've been working with Neeland for about 17 years. Uh, and they first, started, they first started to build them in 1974. So, uh, they're, they're, so and the technology has changed very little since. Right. Um, it, and, and, and so it's often billed as new technology, but it's, it's, not, it's not at all. It's, it's new technology for this country. And the reason is, is because traditionally we've had very cheap gas in this country. And of course we can build not so great houses, you know, mm. with not so much insulation mm. and not so much uh, mm. air tightness. Mm. 
um, that, uh, that uh, we've never known about these mm. sorts of things. And in terms of if someone was watching this and thinking <clears> to myself, God, if you put that with enough solar, <clears> could enough solar run it for, you know, uh, or, or because it's instantaneous, you need to make sure that if it's dark, you can't run it on solar. Yeah, of course, the year this would be a battery system. But yeah, I mean, technically speaking, it's got a 500 watt compressor and the fans are a couple of couple of hundred watts between them. So a maximum of 700 watts running power, then you know, if you've got 700 watts, kill, if you've got 700 watts coming off your solar solar system at that point when you're running it, then then it's running okay. for free. So if you got if you could get a dozen panels up on this roof and yeah. a battery battery store, they yeah. could effectively be completely off grid. You could be, yeah. Apart from the fact you're shrouded in trees, which are lovely, but also yeah. not so great for your solar. <laughs> no, okay, that's amazing. Yeah, so I can't wait now to. Do the next step, which will obviously be get all the first fixing done. Yep. Get the holes through the roof for the so the intake and the extract. Then we're going to get all the ducts in for the MBHR and pipe it up for hot water to all of the yeah, hot all water the sinks areas, and baths the, and showers and all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. this is the first step, and we succeeded. It was a lot of fun actually that first step with the uh, yeah with Mark. Yeah. That's a great piece of kit. Yeah, it was fantastic. Two great it? pieces of kit in one day. Yay! Excellent. Well. Brilliant, that's excellent, Stuart. So we'll now be looking forward to getting the next bit done. And uh, that's it. Cheers. Nice. Let's get it back together. Very good.